Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of the UQ student webinar series. I'm Krandisi, a current Bachelor of Communication student and I'm your host. As an international student myself, I understand that choosing to study overseas is a big decision to make. And you might not be able to pay the campus a visit, which makes it feel like an even bigger deal. I was lucky enough to get a campus tour before coming to UQ, but I understand that it can be quite a scary prospect. Thinking about moving and studying in a new country you've possibly only ever seen online. So today I am joined by two of my classmates, Seb and Ellie, and we're going to talk about a typical day at UQ to give you a closer look at the campus and what our life is like here at UQ. We hope this will give you uh, some comfort when making your decision to choose to study at UQ. So hi guys, welcome to you both. Hi, um, my name is Ellie. I'm 20 years old from Brisbane, Australia, and I'm a communication student at UQ. I actually chose communications because not only was it an extremely convenient location for me, mm -hmm. but also my degree catered to everything I needed and more. Okay. Hi, I'm Seb. I'm 22 years old from the Philippines. I study a Bachelor of Arts, majoring in public policy and international relations. I chose UQ and Brisbane in particular because having grown up in cities like Metro Manila and Hong Kong, I found those quite fast paced. So I was looking for something a bit more laid back and accommodating. So I chose UQ and Brisbane. All right, thank you for that. Um, now let's put the size and location of UQ into perspective for our audience. The University of Queensland is predominantly based in Brisbane and its surrounds. If you don't know where that is, it's on the east coast of Australia, about an hour and a half plane ride north of Sydney and about a two hour flight north from Melbourne. There are two UQ campuses located within Brisbane itself. The St. Lucia campus where we are now mm -hmm. and Hurston. St. Lucia is the main university campus located on the outskirts of the city centre. Hurston is UQ's core campus for clinical health teaching and research. It's located within the Brisbane Health Precinct and adjacent to hospitals and medical research institutes. There's also the Gatton campus, which is about an hour's drive west yeah. of the city. If you study at Gatton, you can live there too at the colleges. Um, students at Gatton typically study agriculture, agribusiness and veterinary science. Mm -hmm. um, there was more information shared about the Gatton campus by Haywan in episode one of the UQ student webinar which you can watch again on the website. All right, it's actually episode three. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> episode three of the UQ student webinar series. Today, we're going to share our experiences from the St. Lucia campus as we all study here. It is considered one of the most beautiful campuses in the world and is a mix of old sandstone, modern architecture, parklands and lakes. So I especially like the Great Court and the topmost floor of one of the engineering buildings. Um, it has a balcony that looks out across the UQ lakes and I think that those are the most calming places in UQ and I love spending my time there. Mm. Oh, here's a picture of me in the middle of Great Court. So the St. Lucia campus is a bit like a city within a city. It is. Yeah, and yeah. it even has its own postcode. It does and that might sound a little bit daunting. But trust us, we're fine now and you will be too. There are around 18,000 other international students studying across UQ oh. campuses, that's quite a big number, <laughs> who have all gone through a similar process as you will if you choose to come here. And everyone on campus is pretty friendly, so you'll be welcomed right in. That's right. The UQ community across the campuses is quite special. You'll meet other students and academics from all over the world. In fact, there are students from 135 different countries studying here at UQ. Mm -hmm. So when I first got to UQ, knowing that there were other people from my home country, Malaysia, nearby was quite comforting. Anyway, we've created a short video to share with you, which takes you through each <laughs> of our typical days at UQ. We wanted to give you a bit of a closer look at the campus grounds, and we'll see you in a minute. Hi everyone, I'm Krandisi and today you're going to join me on my day at UQ. Uh, I'm going to take the bus now and I'll see you there. Good morning, my name is Ellie, I'm 20 years old and I'm in my first year of my communications degree at UQ. Um, 
I'm just going to go around and show you what I'm doing today, just a day in the life of a normal Yukutian. So, let's go. Hi guys, my name is Sebastian, but you can call me Seb for short. I live at International House, which is accommodation on campus. I can wake up as late as half an hour before my class and still get there on time. So here's a little view of where I live. Okay, so I've just arrived at uni. I've popped on my cello park, which is UQ's parking app that helps you pay for parking. And I'm going to hop off to my first class. Because I live on campus, my walk to UQ is barely two minutes, two minutes or so. As you can see, I'm already here. So I just got off the bus and now I'm going to get food. I'm quite hungry, so I'm going to the new food court. And I'm in uni. This is the uni. That's the bus stop. So this is UQ, right behind me over here. And just uh, just along the corner over there is the bus stop at Chancellor's Place. Okay, I'm just in the Great Court at the moment, as you can see. If you do get a chance, have a look at Bogan Smith. It was the first building to be built at UQ, and all the sandstoning has different details, so you'll never find something exactly the same. Now I'm about to go in for my class. I'm off to class right now, and I'm just going to grab a quick coffee before heading over there. Uh, our cafe is called Merlot's and here is a glimpse of the cafe. See you later! So now I'm just heading to the food court to grab a bite to eat. This is the new food court, lots happening, lots of new things and I think I see my friend. So I'm going to have lunch now, sitting in the new food court. This is it, and I just bumped into my friend Ellie. We have a few courses together, and yeah, so gonna have lunch and then go to class. So we just had lunch and we decided to get ice cream from this little place. It's very cute. This happens a lot, especially during swap back. Um, this one in particular, if you flash your ID card, you get 50% off. So I'm gonna enjoy that. Just got her ice cream. So I'm just arriving at my class right now, uh, here at our lecture theater. And they're usually really big lecture halls. They can pack at least 100 and even up to 500 people, if I'm not mistaken. So here we are in one of UQ's biggest lecture halls. Ready for class. See you later. So I'm waiting for class now. I'm a bit early, so I'm waiting outside the lecture hall. The lecture hall is over there. Finally at class. I'm a little bit early. There's not really many people here, so I'm just going to sit down and get ready. I'm still waiting for class, but I decided to come and show you the view from the engineering building. I'm coming back from class now and I'm off the UQ Lakes to have a meeting at a cafe for the Filipino Student Association here at UQ. And just to give you guys a quick glance of the scenery over here, we've got the wonderful, beautiful UQ Lakes. So there's a water fountain over there. Uh, there's usually some ducks around. I don't know if you can see them somewhere in the background over there and yeah guys that's it i'm just at uq aquatic center now just about to have a quick dip it's my friend phoebe Hi. phoebe works for uq for uq sport as you guys can see right now it's kind of dark outside i'm just headed over to the gym to get a get a workout in after a full day of classes Lucky for us, the gym is open as late as 11 p.m. on weekdays and as late as 9 p.m. on weekends and they open really early in the mornings too. I've just arrived home for the day. Thank you for watching my day in the life as a UQ student. So I just finished my workout. It's about 8.30 p.m. and it's been a really long day from going to class, grabbing a bite, meeting friends, and squeezing a workout, squeezing in a workout. Uh, yeah, so that's what a 
day in the life of a typical stu UQ student is like. Uh, that's my day. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hi everyone, I'm at the library now. I'm gonna study here for a bit. Um, so I've got my takeout with me. I'm at the law library now. It's open 24-7. And this is it. It's a bit empty now. There are people on the other side. But thank you for watching my day at UQ. In the video, we all talk about how we get to uni. It's important to note that all of the accommodation options around UQ or Brisbane are very conveniently located to be able to get to campus with ease. So I usually take the bus because the bus stop is literally a two minute walk from my place. And then the bus ride is about 10 to 15 minutes, which I think is really convenient. And I also have student concession on my go-kart, so it costs around a dollar for me to get to uni. Now, as a student, that's really affordable and probably one of the cheapest ways to get here. It's also so fast as the buses have their own lane, so they miss the traffic. <laughs> How do you both get on and off campus? So, I usually drive um, mm. just because it's really convenient for me. Um, I can also drive to work or I can go to Tawong shops and I might not mm. hang around on campus all day. Um, Parking can be a bit tricky. I like to give myself a little bit extra time just so I can find a park and walk to my class and not have to panic. Um, but the uni does encourage more sustainable ways of getting to classes like bi uh, biking or city cat or public transport or even carpooling with a friend. Yeah, so I guess as an international student, buying a car is an expense we might not all be able to afford. I know a few people who have bicycles and they bike to school and there's a lot of bike parking all over campus. Or like for me, the public transport in and around Brisbane is a very practical way to get to uni and to campus, uh, other campuses. And it's not just limited to the bus. You can take the bus, train or boat. And if a boat down the Brisbane River wasn't exciting enough, you could even take lime scooters. Have either <laughs> one of you tried these? Yes, I have. You've got to be a bit careful on them because they do go <laughs> very fast. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so back on topic. Sev, how do you get to your classes? Well, unlike both of you, I'm lucky enough that I get to just walk to uni. I live on <laughs> campus, so it's literally a five minute walk, which is pretty good. That's one of the benefits of living on campus. I can wake up half an hour before class starts and I'm already there, like I said in the video earlier. That's so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so, as we saw in the video, when I get to campus, my priority is usually hot chocolate. But I just want to say that I absolutely love the food on campus. I mean, we have sushi, burgers, burritos, and so much more. My personal favorite is Kenko Sushi. In fact, that was what I was having that day for lunch. There are a lot of cafes around the campus too, which is really convenient for students that need their coffee fix. Ellie, as a local student, you would probably be an expert on coffee. So could you uh, tell our audience about Australian coffee culture? Sure thing. So coffee in Australia is kind of a big deal. We do expect a lot from our coffee. If it's not the best, it's not worth drinking. <laughs> um, okay. It's a bit intense, but you'll actually enjoy it. It's kind of like Italian sort of style but with our own spin on it. So we would definitely recommend getting a mocha at Merlot. <laughs> okay, thank you for explaining that, Ellie. <laughs> um, no um. problem. I think there's a cafe or like an eatery at pretty much every faculty building. So no matter where you are on campus, food or drink or whatever, it's pretty close. Hmm. Yeah. It's very convenient for us. Mm. And it's also very reasonably priced for students. And if you sign up to the student union, you get a UQU membership card and an extra 10% off with that. So Seb, can you tell us a bit more about the pop-up food vendors that come to UQ? Yeah, so during different times of the year, we have various food trucks and pop-up food stalls that come to campus, like for Swathvac or O Week, for example. That uh, ice cream truck that both of you visited in the video was actually on campus for Swathvac. For those of you who watching who don't know what Swathvac is, it's it means study without teaching vacation. It's basically like a study week before exams uh, to get your head down and in the books, shall we say. And the university during the time gets vendors such as ice cream trucks and other food trucks uh, they, to come on campus and to make us happy whenever we need a break from the pressures of studying. Yes, they do make me happy. <laughs> um, 
just to get back to the size of the campus and how spread out it is, I think it's important for us to talk about getting around be in between classes. I know for me, I thought all my classes would be confined to my faculty buildings only. So I thought that since I was from humanities and social sciences, the Haas faculty, all my classes would be in Fog and Smith, which is where the Haas faculty is based. Mm. But you can have classes spread out anywhere around the campus, which depending on how well you plan your class timetable, could mean a lot of moving about during the day. Yeah, like Crancy, I also study communications, so I had classes all around campus. I had one in the engineering building and one in the therapies building, but this semester I've been pretty lucky. I've got them all relatively close to each other, oh, so. That's good. Yes. I think as an uh, international student, it's really important to get to know the campus as much as you can before you have to plan your classes and timetable. That way you know where everything is, you don't end up getting lost or late to anything, and it's just so much easier for you to navigate yourself around. And when you give yourself that opportunity to just navigate and walk around campus, you get more of a chance to appreciate the beauty of it and immerse yourself in it. Yeah, yeah. same if you're a local student too. It really does take some stress out of starting somewhere new. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, as an international student, you have so much more to consider. <laughs> so you should really make it as easy for yourself as you can. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I remember when I first arrived here, I went to all the seminars and talks that were held during orientation week, uh, some which were specifically held for international students. You might have gone for them too. Yes, I did. Yeah. Make sure you go to those as well. Yeah, so mm. those helped me understand how to choose my courses and enrollments and really just helped me to organize myself when I first got here. I also went to talk to someone from my faculty to help me with my timetabling and picking my subjects to ensure I was studying the right courses <laughs> to gain the right experiences for my career path. Also, you don't have to plan your timetable until a week when you're here, so you'll have time to get oriented. What about you both? How were your first few weeks at UQ? Well, my first weeks at UQ went quite smoothly. Um, I just walked around campus and found my, found my way around it. I'm generally good with directions and visually remembering places. So mm -hmm. once I just walked around and tried to get to know it, I kind of figured out where most things were. Obviously, I still needed a map or to look at UQ Nab from time to time. but. Once you, get, once you get to know the place, it comes easy. Yeah, yeah. I actually um, printed out a map of <laughs> UQ and I highlighted everywhere I needed to go and I wrote it all down so I wouldn't get lost. And I downloaded UQ Nav as well, just in case, so then I wouldn't be running around like a headless chook, stressing <laughs> and not knowing where I am and panicking. And I was also really lucky. I made a few friends in my classes who were in the same units as me. Mm -hmm. So I had them to help me as well. <laughs> like you. Yeah, but that's a really smart way of getting around uni. Um, also, now you're in your third year, right? Yes, that's right. Kanti. Yes. Okay, so how many days in a week do you have classes? Well, uh, on, long, on longer semesters, I can have uh, time, a timetable for as long as four to five days in a week. When your timetable is more spaced out, that way you tend to have less hours in the mm. day, maybe two, three hours, maybe even one at, yeah. at best. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you have your timetable more concentrated to say two or three days, a three days a week, which can also happen, you tend to have more hours in the day. Mm -hmm. So planning your timetable also kind of depends on when your courses are going to be scheduled. But if you've got the luxury of planning them, uh, whether to concentrate or uh, spread them out, uh, that's totally up to you. Yeah. So plan your schedule accordingly. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I planned mine very strictly. <laughs> <laughs> so I was only at uni one day a week. So I've got the rest of the week to hang out with friends or go study or work or whatever mm. I really want to do. Okay. Yeah. So since I was staying on campus last year, my timetable was more spread out because I could get to uni faster. And it was a lot more convenient. But since moving out, I've I've been planning my timetable for about three to four days a week maximum. But yeah, so Ellie, in the video, we saw you in a classroom, it looked like, yeah? yeah? So mm -hmm. could you tell us a bit more about the learning spaces here at UQ? All right, so it's a bit different to high school. Um, we have lectures, which typically have a couple hundred students. It depends mm -hmm. on the unit. 
Then we have tutorials or seminars, which are a bit more detailed and intimate. It's like 20 to 30 people. Yeah, no, I've had really good experiences with uh, some of the learning and academic spaces here at UPU. There are quite a lot of big lecture theaters and they really catch your eye with how huge, huge they are, but you get, you get used to that eventually as well. Uh, there are a lot of rooms available around campus, so it's quite easy to book a room. UQ also has a website where you can book your rooms as a student. And yeah, yeah so it's quite accessible whether you need to go into a library to study or to book me uh, rooms for meetings or other studies, group study sessions. And there's an abundance of libraries on campus, so there's plenty of spaces available to study. Yeah, I agree. In between my classes, I usually either grab a bite to eat or catch up on some work. And I'm usually at the law library if I'm doing that, or I'll just chill and at the building my next class is in. One of my favorite study spots is the law library. We have seven libraries on campus. They all have computers, group study areas, and meeting rooms, which you can book, like Seb said, for collaborative projects and 24-hour study spaces as well. On the day we made our video, the law library was so quiet. It was perfect. But during exam time, the libraries can get very busy. But I mean, you can generally find a quiet corner. Mm. Yeah. Did you know that I think it's the bioscience library? Mm. They actually have sleeping pods in it. Like I, <laughs> did ac I did actually know that. I think they added that some time ago since I've entered UQ. I've not actually tried it, but I've, I've heard about it. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always see it when I walk by, <laughs> but I've never been in there. It's such a big campus. You just need to take time and explore yeah. it, I think. And yeah. you never know what you're going to see. Yeah. Exactly. There's always something new. Mm. So other than napping and sleeping pods, could you guys just tell our audience watching about some of the other services and activities available on campus to help us enjoy our UQ life? Yeah, so as I mentioned in the video earlier, I tend to use quite a lot of the athletic facilities quite often, so I try and squeeze in a workout as much as I can. So I go to the gym where we've got that uh, fitness classes there available as well, indoor sporting facilities. And if you can't use any of that, UQ Sport also has a lot of outdoor facilities like basketball, tennis, netball, mm -hmm. courts, and an athletics track. I think there's also a beach volleyball area along, along there some sand pit or so, so there's yeah. an, abund an abundance of uh, athletic facilities available that UQ Sport has. Oh, and there's a pool as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I'm actually, I'm a big fan of the pool. Mm -hmm. um, they've got an Olympic sized swimming pool and I think they have a smaller one as well. They've only recently so. renovated it, so it is quite new, it's very clean, very well looked after. That's good. Yeah, yeah. definitely worth a walk down. Yes. Mm. So I've never like, actually been inside the pool, but I've been there to watch some <laughs> games. And I think I'm with you, Seb. Yeah. I like the UQ gym too. <laughs> Especially the classes in the fitness center. They have yoga, Zumba, and HIIT. And these are all mostly free. Um, have you guys been to any of them? No, I have not, but I look forward to signing up to a few. Perfect. I personally haven't been to any of them, but I know a lot of people who have. Mm -hmm. And I've mostly heard nothing but good things. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely check that out if you're interested. And like I also said in the video, the gym and other facilities are open really early mm -hmm. in the morning. They close quite late in the evening, seven days a week. So that's the luxury we have as UQ students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, have you guys noticed like some of the other events that happen on campus? Like yeah. Food and Fogan and then yeah. there's Tai Chi. Yeah, have you guys seen that? There's a few little odd pop-up things that mm. happen now and then. They're a bit of a surprise, but a good surprise. <laughs> like you'll stumble into an art exhibit or find a nice little like gelato van. Or yeah. What about you? Yeah, no, I've heard of uh, events, pop-up events like Food on Forgan as well. And that one tends to be quite popular. Food on Forgan is uh, uh, an event where Every, no every several weeks or so, uh, food trucks come onto Forgan Smith Lawn, that's right, uh, just outside Forgan Smith Building, where there's a bunch of food trucks available and you can try different kinds of food. And the uni is increasingly having more pop-up events, faculties I notice are doing this as yeah. well. So there is an, there is an growingly, or sorry, increasingly rich experience to being part of uni here. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. 
Um, there are so many events on campus all the time, except you mentioned earlier SWAT yep. back and O Week. These are some of the bigger events which take over the whole campus. We actually just finished O Week, and last week I headed down to the Welcome Hub to capture some video footage to show you. So this Welcome Hub was set up as a part of Orientation Week as a central point of activities and events for all new student students. Let's take a look. Hi everyone, welcome to UQ's Welcome Hub for the second semester of 2019. This is the St. Lucia campus and as you can see, there are many new students here, so let's go down and check it out. the welcome hub this happens at the beginning of every semester so when you do come please make sure you pop by here it's a great way to make new friends and build a UQ community bye bye okay before you go any further let's explain market day a little bit yes. okay. um, market day I think is one of the best events in the UQ calendar mm -hmm. they have I think 200 plus clubs from the UQU yeah, union that's Impressive. Yeah, <laughs> clubs and societies. They'll all be trying to sign up members, hand out freebies. Um, they hold events throughout the year like balls, competitions, barbecues, movie nights, you mm. name it, they'll do it. It's really quite fantastic because it's an easy way to find people that have common interests. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's that's true. Mm. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks Ellie for men mentioning that. So. I am actually currently the president of the Filipino Student Association here at UQ. Uh, we're officially called the Association of Filipinos and Phil Australians at UQ. So for fun, we like to call ourselves Phil Oz UQ. Mm -hmm. And we are basically a socio-cultural organization uh, amongst many other international clubs that UQ Union also offers as part of the uh, increasingly rich international experience here at UQ and but apart from that the other clubs and societies from the Union we offer we offer a bunch of events and basically what we really do is create social social spaces uh, for people to interact commu communicate whether you want to build friendships or networks you can obviously do do both but we really have that goal of creating a fun experience, but also giving you that space where you can feel comfortable at uni. Yeah, that's, thank you for that. Um, we actually spoke about mm. this in episode one, which you can watch on the website, and how important it is to join a club or a society. I think it's a really good way to network and <laughs> meet new people. You know, you'll find people mm. with similar interests as you, maybe from your home country, like Seb and his Filipino society, or on the same program maybe. These clubs and societies open up so much and really increase your exposure to new cultures, people, and ways of thinking. For me, I'm an international student ambassador. And again, it's a great way of networking, but while I'm also representing the university. So I can meet new people from different countries and different professions about the uni and also learn a lot about UQ itself while getting a taste of what it's like to work with a world-renowned brand. This is really, this is a really important experience for me and links so well to my studies, which is really beneficial. What's comforting about it though, is getting to greet and welcome new students to UQ and sharing my experiences with them. Like as an, a, as an ambassador, I help new students feel welcome and feel just more comfortable in this new place. I'm sure <coughs> you'll have some experiences about being a part of one of the clubs or societies, right Seb? Absolutely. I think you mentioned this earlier uh, when you found other Malaysians here yeah. at UQ. You yeah. felt more comfortable. But you also mentioned that earlier. It's about it's about sharing your experiences. As part of yeah. Philos in particular, it's also about that uh, imparting that rich international and diverse experiences and exposure that we can offer. But more importantly, like you said, it is about sharing those experiences. When you come into uni and Try all sorts of new things, clubs and societies being one of those things. Uh, 
you experience things for the first time and you really have a lot of fun with it. And clubs and societies also offer uh, leadership positions for you to improve your soft skills and working with people. So when you think about it in that sense, you come into your first year, you really have a lot of fun with it. And then as you progress throughout your time in UQ, you get the opportunity to take, take up leadership roles. And that's all about sharing good experiences that, that you've had. So in a way, it's recreating all the fun and the magic that you had as your first time as a student to give that same opportunity to, to other people. And I think that's the best part about it. Yeah, not only that, it's also great work, in work experience and it would be absolutely fantastic on a resume. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and great networking as well. These connections mm. you make in uni are so important later in life when you've graduated and you're looking for a job. Yeah, yeah whether you're building uh, friendships or networks, mm. uh, these are really valuable connections that you make as, and in developing your soft, soft skills as well. You know, we all have to work with people, so uh, these are very <laughs> useful skills to uh, pursue and challenge yourself towards. Yeah. It's actually very much like yourself, like how you started off as just a member, but now yeah. you're the president of the society. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thank you both for that and for coming up mm. today and helping me just talk about your UQ life. Thank you so much, you guys. No worries. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having us, Crancy. It was wonderful. Thank you. And for those of you watching, just remember, it doesn't matter how far away from home you are, but when you're here at UQ, you're not alone. You'll be a part of the UQ community, you'll have this wonderful place to study and call home, and you will be embracing your UQ life, gaining new experiences, learning from Australia's best, some of, and growing your independence. I hope to see you all at UQ soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.